Black holes are one of our universe's greatest and most destructive mysteries. Their true power is difficult to fully comprehend, but to take a step in the right direction, it may help to think about what might happen if a black hole appeared really, really close to home. Just a small one, the size of a coin. Even at this size, things get real crazy real fast. Fasten your galactic seatbelts as I take you on a space-time bending journey of mystery and destruction. The first thing to note is that black holes aren't really holes. In fact, they're the densest objects in the known universe. Most black holes are created when huge stars collapse, and in mere moments, the cores of gas giants many times more massive than our sun are compressed to a tiny fraction of their original size. Despite their relatively small size, the sheer amount of mass contained within the black holes gives them an enormous gravitational pull. It's the same principle that pulls us towards the ground of the Earth, only if Earth's mass were comparable to a black hole, jumping to score a slam dunk would be permanently out of the question. As a matter of fact, so would all sports, and any movement, or life in general. But I'll get into the destructive details in a while. Black holes are often described as blank spots in the universe, and are detected only by the effect they have on what surrounds them. The event horizon of a black hole is the distance which no known matter, not even light, can escape its pull. Light is a kind of electromagnetic radiation, and exists as little energy packets called photons. Photons have no mass, but they're still affected by gravity. To understand how this is possible, it's useful to know that that the commonly held idea of gravity is just a pull is a simplification. It's actually way weirder. All objects, with or without mass, warp the very fabric of the universe, which is known as space-time. As black holes have such enormous masses, they distort space-time substantially enough that they are able to noticeably alter the path of light. Light simply follows the distorted curve of space-time created by the black hole, becoming trapped inside. I'll give you a moment to process all of that. Ready to carry on? Great. And even so, even light is drawn towards black holes, hence the name. But the complexity doesn't end there. Stephen Hawking put forward the theory that black holes emit something called Hawking radiation. This means that black holes may be giving out energy as well as drawing it in, meaning they'll eventually use up their resources and die. Black holes are both fascinating and scary. Most of the world's prominent physicists agree that there's a supermassive black hole at the center of our own galaxy, and that in the same way Earth orbits around the Sun, our solar system orbits this dark beast. But but despite the hundreds of positive theories and the reams of research we've managed to accumulate, we are really only just beginning to understand black holes. We do know, however, that they're one of the most destructive forces in the universe. So what would happen if a black hole appeared on Earth? A supermassive black hole would eliminate the solar system immediately. But what about a slightly more reasonably sized one? A tiny one even. Say that little guy I mentioned before, the one the size of a coin. For this thought experiment, it's necessary to define exactly what is meant by the size of a coin, namely, mass or diameter. As black holes are incredibly dense, if one were to have the mass of a coin, it would be very, very tiny. So tiny, in fact, that it wouldn't be stable enough to stick around very long. Not that this would make it safe and harmless, though. A black hole with a diameter of a coin would be a different story. Let's explore both. If a black hole had the mass of a coin, like a nickel, which is 5 grams or approximately a fifth of an ounce, it would decay into Hawking radiation extremely quickly. Basically, all black holes eventually evaporate after reaching a certain size, and this evaporation gets faster and faster the smaller the black hole gets. A tiny fifth ounce black hole would be near the end of its lifespan and the rapid decay would release a huge amount of energy. In fact, it would release energy three times that released by the nuclear bombs dropped on Hiroshima and Nagasaki combined, equal to approximately 110 kilo tons of explosives. If it spawned in San Francisco, this little terror would be enough to destroy most of the city. If the black hole was in the ocean, or very close to a tectonic plate within the Earth, the consequences could be more extreme. It would be equivalent to a substantial nuclear blast, and so could potentially cause earthquakes and even tsunamis. Humanity would survive most likely, but the destruction and death toll would be considerable. Cities or entire islands could be destroyed. If it were a major international center like New York, London, or Tokyo, then the geopolitical and financial consequences could ripple throughout the rest of the world. After the blast, rubble, debris, and dust from the explosion could be flung for miles, causing electrical issues and respiratory difficulties among countless other problems. And imagine the widespread horror and social unrest when we all realize black holes are just appearing out of thin air. This is apocalyptic stuff, and there would be no way to prepare for it or know whether or not it would happen again. The one upside, maybe, is that it would be a real boon for physicists. Graduate physicist employment would skyrocket, as we put everything into trying to figure out what the heck 
heck is going on. And as horrifying as all of that sounds, the spontaneous black hole with a coin's mass is the better option. A black hole with a diameter of a coin would cause an absurd amount of damage. This little black hole would be stable enough to stick around, and that means it would do what a black hole does best, crush. If it were the size of a nickel, the black hole would have a mass almost exactly equal to that of the Earth. If it were the size of a quarter, it'd have almost twice the mass of Venus. And all of that mass in a black hole is actually concentrated at its center. When we visualize a black hole, we usually include everything up to its event horizon, but all its physical mass is actually thought to be found in a singular tiny point. This is known as a singularity. For the purposes of this video, however, the diameter refers to the distance between the opposite edges of the black hole's event horizon. The placement of this black black hole of ours matters. The side of our planet closest to the black hole would have the most gravitational pull exerted on it, and would be pulled first into the abyss, followed by, well, the rest. Rock by rock, pebble by pedal, atom by atom, the Earth and everything on it would be pulled into the black hole. Once past the black hole's event horizon, everything would be crushed into absolute oblivion. Every atom of every thing, person, and animal inside the black hole would be compressed into a space more claustrophobic and unpleasant than a sweaty rush hour subway train. As a nickel size black hole would have an almost identical mass and hence gravitational force to Earth, the two would form a mutual orbit. Like a face-sucking teenage couple at the school dance, the two celestial bodies would perform a disturbing final dance. The close proximity of the two would cause the black hole to physically pass through the Earth during its orbit, pulling enormous chunks of our planet beyond its event horizon as it went. With every movement, the little black hole would be eating our planet. Eventually, there would be nothing but a hollow disk of rock where our Earth once stood, orbiting the black hole, and the moon orbiting that. We of course, would be all long gone, along with all other life on our former planet. So, everything gets pulled into a black hole. What happens to it there? Let's imagine you sat there on the bus, minding your own business, when our coin diameter black hole comes into being inside your wallet. As if small change wasn't annoying enough, every nanometer of your being would be dragged into the black hole, partially because of the closeness between its center of mass and your body. But another factor equally important, any part of you in direct contact with the ever-growing mini-monster would soon find itself in the basically infinite pull beyond its event horizon. And being pulled into a black hole happens in a totally mind-bending way. The parts of you closest to the black hole will be pulled towards it with a greater acceleration due to gravity. This means the bits of you closest to your wallet, your legs, and... Uh, groin would be stretched into long lines of atomic and subatomic particles. These would lead the way as you were tugged into the black hole, or as those in the know put it, spaghettified. The rest of you would follow suit in the nanoseconds following. I don't know about you, but I think spaghettification deserves a place on the list of most bizarre physics terms, alongside charm quarks and sleptons. What would all this look like to the guy unlucky enough to be sat next to you in the bus, if they were able to view it all in a super slow action replay? Well, as the gravitational field of a black hole bends spacetime, and consequently light, everything around the black hole, including you, will appear smudged and distorted in a circular pattern around that coin in your wallet. The curvature of space-time caused by a black hole means that, to any outsider looking in, time appears to slow down. For the person next to you, the closer the stringy mess that once was your body gets to the black hole, the slower it'll appear to be moving, until it eventually reaches the little black hole's event horizon. Here, you would appear to stop and then slowly fade out of existence. As a matter of fact, you'd gradually become pinker, as the wavelengths of light reflecting back into the eyes of the viewer become increasingly shifted towards the red end of the spectrum. All of this happens because of the space-time bending effects of the black hole. Pretty weird bus ride for the guy next to you, but not for long because you'd be sharing an almost infinitely small one-room apartment in less than a nanosecond. Anything in the universe, theoretically, can become a black hole with enough force. Luckily for us, though, it seems that the necessary compression only usually happens to very, very big things. The stars we believe become black holes are usually around 25 times greater than the mass of our sun. A little smaller, around 10 times our sun and you get a neutron star. Even smaller stars will simply cool down and become dwarf stars, but those stars that are massive enough collapse with an unimaginable amount of energy, compressing their cores and expelling stellar materials across the universe in explosive events known as supernovae. So, considering the mass usually required to form a black hole, it's not likely to happen on or near Earth, especially in your pocket. But the truth is, there's a lot we don't know about black holes. Certainly, we don't know much about what's in the center of them. Apart from being spaghettified, does what falls into a black hole retain physical form? Does it break all the laws of physics by ceasing to exist? Are black holes pathways to alternate universes? These and many other theories have been posited. As for finding out for ourselves, the tiny meat suits we occupy would be pulled apart pretty early in our journey. So unless we can get around that issue, it'll be difficult to know for sure what goes on beyond the event horizon. We may never know everything about black holes, but we're finding out more every day, and advances like the imagery from the event horizon telescope are helping us to do so. One thing's for sure 
occur though, enough is known for me to advise you that you should probably stay away from them. And if you suspect one is materializing in your wallet, don't try to spend it on a soda. Throw it as far as you can and hope for the best. Are you mesmerized by the cosmic mystery that is black holes? Or are you just plain terrified? What crazy theories do you have about them? Let me know in the comments section down below. Thanks for watching.